Hello and welcome back to the Hibs Observer Thursday afternoon briefing with myself, Liam Bryce, joined as always by Patrick McPartland as we look ahead to the return of domestic football this weekend. A um, few things on the agenda, we'll obviously look at the game against Rangers on Saturday, um, We'll look at Nick Montgomery's comments on Emiliano Marcondes and perhaps the potential possibility, chance of him extending his stay at Hibs beyond this summer. Um, and we'll dig into a few other things along the way as well, I'm sure. Just before we get started, um, just got a sponsor's message that I want to draw everybody's attention to, um, to talk about something that's key to keeping our homes warm and cosy. We are thrilled to have Weissman, a global leader in the boiler industry, known for their top-notch German engineering sponsor, our podcast. Uh, they've teamed up with Scotland's very own award-winning installation team, MPH Boilers, making this a perfect match right here in Scotland. Uh, Weissman's boilers are engineered to deliver not just warmth, but unparalleled efficiency and reliability. We're talking about cutting edge technology that's designed to save you on energy bills and, of course, reduce emissions. And with MPH boilers, you know you're getting service from the best in the business. It's a local team that's committed to excellent and excellence, sorry, and customer satisfaction. As part of this incredible partnership, when you choose a Weissman boiler installed by MPH boilers, you also get a free internet controller making it a breeze to manage your heating anytime, anywhere. Plus, they're offering the first year service free because it's all about giving you peace of mind and making sure you're looked after. So if your boiler is showing its age or you're, you're just considering an upgrade, this is your chance to get world-class engineering with local expert service. Weissman and MPH Boilers, it's a match made in Scotland. Make sure to check them out and take the first step towards a warmer, more efficient home. That was not bad. I'll be on QVC before you know it, Patrick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if all else fails. Um, yeah, anyway, moving on. Um, the end of the international break, Patrick. But obviously, firstly, how are you? How are you getting on? I'm good. Yeah, thank you. Um, missing missing domestic football a fair bit. Um, I think when you have a, like I said this in a newsletter today, when you have the domestic, the, the international break, you sort of think, great, it's a chance to kind of, you know, recharge the batteries. But Usually what happens is about three days in, I'm just sort of really missing press conferences and, you know, games, looking ahead to them, who's fit, who's not. So, um, you know, and, and it's nice to get a break, but at the same time, you know, domestic football uh, getting closer and closer to return is uh, something to be celebrated in the Parliament household for sure. Yeah, it's certainly a comfort. Like, I mean, it wasn't wasn't exactly a vintage international break from a Scottish perspective either, was it, to be fair? I mean, I it was like... Wrong quite quickly from that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it was like, going, it was kind of back in the day, almost, you know, like, kind of more what I was used to growing up, you know, playing really well against a top nation, but still getting gubbed 4-0 and then getting beat at Hamden on a Tuesday night friendly. I was like, this is, this is what I grew up watching, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, on to the domestic football, um, because the less said about Scotland over the last couple of weeks, the better. Um, Hibs are back on Saturday. It's a, it's a trip down to Ibrox, the first of three games before the Premiership splits in half, and it's still it's still very much up in there as to whether what you know what side of that divide Hibs are going to finish on. Um, only a couple of points in it down to Dundee, but Dundee do have a game in hand. Um, you know, obviously of the three fixtures, this is, you know, this is definitely the the trickiest for Hibs to get something from, isn't it? Against a team which, you know, let's be honest, you know, Hibs have really they have struggled badly against this Rangers team this season. So it's a tall order for Nick Montgomery's side. Patrick, how do you see it? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to use the cliche term and say it's a free hit because obviously it isn't. Um, I think the first person to be saying it is, is Nick Montgomery himself. I think that you know you look at the previous games against Rangers in the league and in the cup. I think there has been sort of incremental improvements each time. Um, I mean that's maybe not saying much because the the four 0 game at Ibrox back in October was I think pretty pretty forgettable from a Hibs point of view and. You know, it, it did seem to the result and the performance did seem to sort of change something in, in how Montgomery was kind of setting up his team. They did seem a bit 
almost like they've got a bit of a fright by it, um, a bit of fright from it, sorry. And then, you know, the, the game in January, again, there's caveats. It's, you know, one of the first domestic games back after a lengthy break. But, you know, it was just, again, just like not not a great, not a great night for Hibs. You know, a 3 0 defeat. They were never really, never really at the races. And then I think in the in the cup game, you did see some signs of improvement. You did see some signs that, you know, Hibs were moving in the right direction as a team, that the January signings were making a bit of a a, a, a difference. Um, but then ultimately, you know, it still ends in, in a defeat, it ends in a cup exit. Um, but, you know, I think you, you kind of, I think when you're a team like Hibs, you need to go into these games and sort of think, you know, we, we can compete, not just sort of go in thinking we're already beaten, which I think has probably been... You know, probably been a problem with the team, not not maybe not recently, um, but certainly you know in you know in sort of seasons gone by, I think there has been a bit of a a feeling that you know these are the big boys and you know we won't get anything here, so you know let's just try and try and ensure that we don't let in too many goals. Basically, um, I think I think Nick Montgomery's mentality has changed that. I think that um, you know they probably were a little unlucky in the cup game. If uh, Mizian Melida is luckier with that chance, um, you know that hits the post, then you know maybe it's a totally different, totally different game, totally different cup tie. Um, but I think you know in terms of the top six and you know trying to get as many points as possible, you, you probably want the games to be in the order they're in. I think you probably want the Rangers game to come first. You wouldn't want to be going to Ibrox in the last sort of pre-split game needing three points to either you know secure a top half finish or you know a European spot. Um, or you know probably would be a European spot, but you know what I mean. So you know getting out of the way early is probably you know probably a good thing. Any signs of rustiness from the team, they can you know get it out of the get out of the way pretty quickly, and then sort of focus on the next two the next two games, which you know are you know should be more winnable for Hibs, um, and you know hopefully set them up well for you know finishing where they want to. But that's not to say they couldn't take anything um, you know from Rangers on Saturday. As we know, this is a, a strange league. It's a strange division. Um, we've seen anything happen, um, and I guess we'll find out on Saturday afternoon if uh, if we're going to get another another twist in the season. Yeah, definitely agree. This is of, of the three that you kind of just want to get. If you're a Hibs fan, you just want to get this one out of the way. Um, because I mean, obviously, yet nobody's really expecting you know, considering the results against Rangers this season, to go and win at Ibrox. But you know, if even if Hibs were to even come away with a point from this, it it just kind of sparks a bit of momentum getting into two very winnable games um, to try and get this over the line. Um, and obviously every every single point at this stage is ex- could be potentially extremely, extremely valuable um, once the league splits. Uh, we had a look on the website um, earlier in the week just that, you know, how Nick Montgomery might approach this. There's, you know, as always getting into any big game, there's always decisions for the manager to make in terms of systems, uh, personnel. I think... Uh, for me, maybe from that, you know, that kind of train of thought, the, the most interesting area I think is, you know, what does he go with um in the middle of the park? Because it's you have we have seen him in you know in certain games kind of go to a more sort of four three three type, um, a more compact setup rather than the four two three one. And I think that's whether he goes for that this weekend will probably be dictated by who he decides to choose, really. I think, you know, you've got Joe Newell in the middle of the park, captain, you know, you think nailed on to start a fit. I think the you know, the impact from Nectar Triantis stepping into that position um has been has been really, really good. I think in that cup tie you could probably have maybe you could have argued he was he was up there, if not Hibbs best player. He was certainly one of the best on the night. Um so I'd expect the two of them to continue um, more so at the base of midfield. So then it becomes about, you know, do you bring Nathan Mariah Welsh back in for that kind of extra bit of tenacity, a bit more solidity, somebody who, you know, who's kind of one of his main attributes is his ability to get around the park. Or do you want Emiliano Marcondes, uh, you know, to stay in the team in midfield, you know, in his preferred position? Because I don't, I'm not convinced that we're, um, we're going to see the false nine experiment again. Um, I don't think any. I don't think any fan is, you know, expecting or wanting to see that um, again this weekend. So, I mean, it's a tough. I think you could make an argument for both, couldn't you, Patrick? Do you want your more creative outlet, and the, you know, you, you don't want to take too much of that away because you still want to go and have a go. But at the same time, this is a you know, you're coming up against a side to have. In certain circumstances, you know, really dominated the midfield against Hibs this season. So it's uh, 
it's perhaps the most important decision. Yeah, I don't think that's a don't think that's an unfair comment. I think that what Nick Montgomery does have on his side is that he does have you know a clutch of midfielders who are all fit, um, assuming no one's been injured during the international break, and you know that could be really useful just in terms of you know throughout the whole game, because obviously yeah you you know you pick you pick your starting midfielders, but then you know what we've noticed with Montgomery Sims team is it's sort of vital to him that he has players who can come off the bench and make a difference, not just kind of making up numbers. I mean, you know, he thought about it enough when he had all those injuries um, in the sort of winter months. And I think that whether whether you start uh, Nathan Mariah Welch, whether you start Nick Triantis, whether you start Emmy Marcondes, I think ultimately you have to be looking at the game as a whole and not just, you know, the first sort of 60, 65 minutes and, and the rest of the game. So I think there, there probably is an argument for for starting Mariah Welsh um, in the midfield and then bringing on Triantis or bringing on Marcondes and you know there's, there's obviously an argument for doing uh, for doing the opposite as well. I think you know it's, it's a nice it's a nice headache for for Montgomery to have. He's he's not had it too often um, since he took since he took charge at Easter Road. But I think ultimately it has to be. Thinking you know which players can can make a difference and which players can make an impact, and you need players who can do that from the start, and you need players who can you know kind of come off the bench and, and finish the game if you like. Um, and I, I suppose it's it's a balancing act about thinking, you know, do you want to try and hit Rangers from the start, try and get you know a quick start like they, like they did against Livingston. Um, suspect Rangers might put up a bit more of a fight than Livingston, however, um, <laughs> in the in their defensive third. But you know, I think it's it is a nice dilemma to have. You look at you know any one of those players, um, you know, could start any you know any combination really. Um, for me personally, I would be I would be having Emiliano Marcondes in there basically for as long as he can play for because I just think he's got that that sort of you know footballing brain that the others don't have. He sees passes that others don't. I think he's he's sort of built up quite a good understanding with uh, with Adam Lafondre as well, mm -hmm. who. You know, assuming Dylan Venti maybe isn't you know 100 fit, or if he is you know fit, he might not be fit to start. Then you know I think the, the way those two kind of dovetailed um, in sort of recent matches has been been really effective, and you know I don't I don't see any reason to change that. And you know when you look to the sort of rest of the attacking third, you've got you know Melida on the left, and then on the right I suspect it could be it could be Eli Yuan again. Um, I think we'll find out tomorrow at the, the pre-match press conference whether Martin Boyle is sort of you know fit and ready to go, and you know if he is available, whether he is in a position to start or whether he is you know sort of maybe just good for uh, for coming off the bench. But either way, you know again, you know you've got options, and you know that's something that Montgomery hasn't had uh, too often. So it's it, it, it does come down to. You know, it's it's all about who performs really. So you know, you could pick what you think is the right eleven, and if they don't perform, then you know it kind of cancels each other out. Um, but I think what's what's sort of nice to see is just that there are so many midfielders who could start, and you know, I don't I don't really think you look at any of them and say you know starting him uh, would make the team weaker or starting him would make the team stronger. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't like to be in, in Nick Montgomery's shoes, that's for sure. Because I think it's it is quite a hard a hard choice to make, um, but at the same time, I think you also look at how the team performed in the second half against Ross County, how they performed against Livingston, and you know you just think maybe you don't want to change that too much when you know players seem to be kind of developing an understanding, seem to be playing really well, uh, and you know it's just kind of looks a lot more cohesive than it did, and you know we've seen Hibs managers in the past completely kind of rip up the script for games against Hearts or Rangers or Celtic and you know it's it's usually been unnecessary it's usually led to um you know the wrong sort of result so you know a lot a lot of food for thought there for for Nick Montgomery um and I think yeah it'll be interesting to see what he goes for um I mean he could he could pull a surprise um it could be something totally different um he's not beyond doing that but um yeah I think just interesting to see which which selection he goes for um from the start and you know who comes off the bench to hopefully make a difference in the second half yeah definitely i mean it'll be easier to make uh 
educated guesses at this. If you like, once he, you know, the manager's going to speak to the media tomorrow, he'll give an update on who's fit, who's available, who's maybe not going to make it. Um, so obviously that'll include the likes of Martin Boyle. We'll find out where Dylan Venti's at as well. Obviously Lewis Miller missed at the last game. So uh, if you, you know, keep an eye on our website tomorrow and we'll have updates on that as soon as we can. But I think, you know, I think there is definitely, you know, definitely merit in what you're saying there about just, you know, it's, it's not broken at the moment. So, um, you know, why not? You know, no need to fix it. Sorry. Um, totally lost the run of that analogy there. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know what I'm getting at. You know what I'm getting at. Um, but yeah, as I say, you know, it's it has worked well the last couple of games. And I think Montgomery, as we've, you know, we've seen, he's not a manager who he can he can make adjustments for these for these games as we've seen but you know he will still i think by and large try and stick to the way that he wants Hibs to play you know you've not seen Hibs really you know just for example just abandon playing out from the back against Celtic and Rangers they've kept on trying to do that they will try and get bodies forward get guys into wide areas so i, I think you know in a game where you're not expected to get a result but you know you've happened upon an 11 uh, over the last couple of games, it seems to have been working. Then there's probably no, probably no great pressing need for the manager to, you know, to make wholesale changes, unless you know he thinks, you know, digging in for a point would make, you know, all the absolute difference um, in the run for top six. Then he might, he might pull a surprise in that sense. But you know, based on kind of previous evidence, I'm not, I'm not expecting too many wholesale changes. Um, mm. So you can you can bookmark that if you like um, when there are nine on the team sheet and um, when there are nine defenders on the Hibs team sheet come Saturday afternoon. Um, but yeah, happened. I know exactly. Yeah. Um, Montgomery himself, he might he might pull the boots on, drop back into the uh, centre half. I'm sure he did that once or twice during his career. Um, you touched on uh, Emiliano Marcondes there as well, Patrick. There's you know there've been some comments from the manager this week. Uh, as to you know what may happen um, with him come this summer, obviously it's it's a pretty exciting prospect for Hibs fans for to even have a discussion about possibly keeping that a player of that caliber for um, longer than his current loan arrangement. Um, Montgomery's certainly not you know he's not ruling it out, and obviously why would he at this point if nothing's been you know if nothing's definitive, nothing being decided, he he's going to have a conversation with Marcondes come the end of the season. And I think it would just be, you'd imagine that part of that conversation, at least Patrick, will be, you know, emphasising to Marcondes, you know, that this, is, this has been quite good for you over these past couple of months. You know, he was a guy who didn't play football for months and months on end. He just kind of faded into the background at Bournemouth, needed somewhere to go, give him a platform. Um, you know, the fans love him at Easter Road. He seems to have fitted in really well. He himself has said, you know, he enjoys this style of play. He likes what the manager's trying to do. So I'd, I'd imagine if there's, once that conversation comes around, these will be things that Nick Montgomery will be trying to emphasise towards him. I mean, oh, at the end of the day, we know like the most important thing is probably, is going to be the financial element. We could probably come to that in a few minutes or so. But just first of all, you know, it's, it's, it's as well as Marcondes has been good for Hibs, you know, this this arrangement, it's it certainly helped the player, I think, over the past couple of months, would you say? It has, yeah. I think, you know, quite often you see players who've been out for, you know, that length of time and it's just sort of getting back to, you know, enjoying football again, getting back to the player they were, or as close to, you know, sometimes they have to have to adapt, um, depending on the nature of the injury. But I just think, obviously, Montgomery's done a really good job in selling the prospect of playing for Hibs, um, you know, to Marcondes. I think the most, one of the most sort of endearing things about the player is that he's not, you know, he's not just come up here and treated as a, a kind of fitness camp, if you like. He's come up, he's sort of fully subscribed to what Hibs are trying to do. He's subscribed to the brand of football. He's, you know, become a fan's favourite very quickly. Um, and just, you know, even sort of like off the pitch stuff, um, you know, he's, I, mean, I, I think, uh, I can't remember if it was, earlier this week or last week, but he certainly spent time with, uh, you know, doing a question and answer session with the academy, um, the academy players at HTC. And you just think that's, that's sort of like going above and beyond what a lone player would usually do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just sort of speaking of his experiences in football, um, you know, what he's had to overcome in, in terms of injuries and, you know, what he's, 
what he'd experienced uh, at Brentford, Bournemouth, uh, and you know in, in Denmark as well. And I think he's he's one of those players who um, I'm going to get a lot of angry people here. He reminds me a little bit of Jackson Irvin, not in terms of playing style, but just in terms of this sort of slightly apart from the rest of the football and crowd, and probably won't really be swayed purely by money. And you know, I think it's. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where, you know, he's probably looked at Hibbs as, you know, an intriguing prospect, uh, you know, to kind of get his fitness back, but also enjoy football. He's living in Edinburgh, direct flights to Copenhagen. Um, and, you know, it, it's just that I think he's the kind of player who can sort of like look at what a club's trying to do. And even if he's there on loan, like fully buys into it. So, you know, I think, I mean, obviously you can look at Bill Foley's investment and, you know, you can say, OK, he's given the club X amount of money. Uh, to spend in the summer, let's you know put a load of that to uh, you know paying Emiliano's wages. But you know, it's I don't think he's the sort of player who's just sort of purely mo- motivated by that. I mean, for him, it could be about happiness, it could be about you know game time, it could be about you know a lot of a lot of different reasons. I don't, I don't think you look at him and say the chances of him staying are very slim. I think you know obviously it depends on a lot of a lot of different factors, but. You know, I think at this stage, you know, not even into April, we're sort of saying, well, you know, there's a possibility it could happen. Um, you know, neither neither the player nor nor Montgomery have been, you know, kind of trying to push people away from it. It's, it still seems to be very much a, an option, and it's, a, and it's, it's, it's an exciting one. Um, I think when you look at the caliber of players who were brought in during the January transfer window, like Melida, like Marcondes, like Triantis, you know, players who can you know, make a difference, who have made a difference, who've helped, you know, the club kind of get back on a bit more of an even keel after that kind of pretty poor run between uh, December and the end of January. It's, you know, if you can attract players like that, then, you know, obviously shows you're doing something right. In the case of Marcondes, there could even be, you know, the European push. I know it's maybe unlikely is that is that a bit too strong it's you know obviously you know hips have the signs of finishing in the top six and then from then on it's you know can they be able to push for europe and i think you know that can that can sort of inspire players it can you know have an impact on you know what they decide to do and if Hibs do manage to get into europe then you know that that could sort of that could play a part in in his decision making um but you know, I think he is the kind of player who you know would think quite long and hard about something like this. I don't think it would just be a case of you know which club's going to pay me the most money, or where can I get the longest contract, or you know where can I get the biggest sign and on fee. Um, you know, I think there's there's a lot more to uh, to Mark Andes than, than just sort of like the financial side of things. Um, you know, just kind of seeing his career out. I mean, he's he's just turned twenty nine, so he is at that sort of stage of his career where he probably wants to be playing every week. He probably wants to be playing somewhere. You know, obviously at a good level, and he wants to be playing somewhere where you know he's enjoying it. He's loved by the fans, and you know he's playing good football. And he, so far, he's getting that at Hibs. And I think if you look at, you know, we talk about the full investment. If you know the clubs that are using that to bring in players of a similar caliber in the summer, then that bodes well for next season. And he could very well, you know, fancy being a big part of that. Um, and I think you know another thing that's not really been talked about much is. I think in terms of his character, I mean, we know how much sort of importance Montgomery and Brian McDermott and other people at the at the club place on a player's character. And I just think, you know, he's you know, he's a sort of perfect example of that. You know, a player who's, you know, got exactly what you need for a dressing room, exactly what you need on the pitch. I mean, you can see him during games. He is, is almost like having a kind of, um, you know, a second captain on the pitch. At times, the way he's telling players where to go, shouting at them if they do something wrong, applauding them if they do something well, uh, you know, kind of getting the fans going as well. And I just think it's, I think it is an intriguing prospect because I don't, I don't think it's, you know, necessarily a case of you'll go, you know, where the most money is. Um, I think there's, I think there's a very real possibility he could see, you know, his future being at Easter Road for how long, who knows? Um, but you know, he's out of contract in the summer, assuming Bournemouth don't. Kind of offer him a new deal, then you know anything's possible. Yeah, I mean, as we're kind of alluding to earlier on, nobody has ruled it out at this point, which obviously, you know, 
it offers some encouragement at least that you know it's not being completely taken off the table. And I think you're you're right in saying he looks to have really kind of just embraced um, exactly what you know what Hibs are all about. Um, seems to enjoy being in Edinburgh, as you say, the stuff about you know going above and beyond um, the stuff with the academy players. It just kind of it points to somebody who feels quite comfortable um, in the surroundings that they've that they've found themselves in. And I think for a guy who is you know he spent a long time, you know, relatively uh, sitting on the sidelines waiting for a chance to play football again. I think even before that he had, you know, he had kind of various other injury issues as well. He, he kind of maybe fell out of the picture a wee bit. So I think, you know, the, the just the value of being able to say like, you know, okay, you're going to be our main man next season. You'll get a full pre-season. Um, and then if that, you know, chances are you will be in the team. You know, we're going to, he's the kind of, the kind of player of that kind of quality that you would that you would build things around. You know, I think there's a sense at the moment that he's not even. I don't even think he's operating quite at full tilt. You know, yeah. there's been a couple of games where he's you know he had the wee injury as well, so he maybe came back and maybe looked a wee bit rusty. A couple of games I felt he was maybe just kind of adjusting to the um, the rough and tumble, shall we say, of Scottish football. He does get a bit of attention um, in that sense. Um, but I think just you know, as you're saying, as you're saying there, he's not doesn't look like you know the kind of character where money is the be all and end all. Obviously, it'll be a factor. You know, there could be you never know what happened this summer. That there could be a club in a very attractive destination offering a very attractive amount of money. Um, and if if Hibs can't compete with that, Hibs can't compete with that. But I think what they can offer him is what we've said is a place to um, to just you know to rebuild. Um, his career. I'm not saying it went, you know, completely off the rails or anything, but it did stall um, from, you know, the kind of highs of scoring in the championship playoff final to, you know, just being on the treatment table, not really getting a look in at Bournemouth, even when he was on his way back. So, I mean, as you said, there's a lot to be said for just giving somebody a platform to play, and obviously the the, the potential from to you know to come to Hibs and be in Scotland and being sort of main man, it, it kind of it could be really appealing um, to players, and it's you know. I think it's definitely worth Hibs having that conversation. He's definitely worth pushing the boat out for, if possible. We, the article we did about him today on the website, you know, we just kind of a wee bit of his kind of statistics compared to other players of a similar position in the league, and even without really being at full tilt, he outperforms, you know, your average Scottish Premiership attacking midfielder in a lot of areas. He's, you know, you can see the value of you know, take stats away from it. You see this at. Uh, with the eye test, you just see how kind of he finds space for himself, how he composed he is on the ball, and then obviously, as you alluded to there, how he sort of conducts things on the pitch. So he's certainly, he's one of those players who, you know, probably don't come along very often for clubs in Scotland out with, you know, the top two with the money and resources that they've got. So I think, you know, as you say, if there's a chance for Hibs to, to, to push the boat out for him this summer and he is open to the prospect, then it's, it seems like a bit of a no-brainer. But, you know, at the moment, um, that's a conversation for a few weeks down the line. I think you're you're right in saying as well, um, I think we alluded to this in the piece as well, if Hibs get into the top six, it's a much more attractive end to the season for him, isn't it? Like, cause he'll, he's yeah. the kind of guy who you think he'll have come here with, you know, the Edinburgh Derby in mind, games against Celtic and Rangers in mind, pushing for Europe. It's... I think if you were to compare that to, you know, finishing in the bottom six and then what essentially becomes... A series of you know dead rubbers. You could almost you could use if the, you know Hibs get into the top six. They could almost use those final games to you know almost woo them in a sense. You know, like this is what <laughs> this is what you could have more of next season if you want to stay, kind of thing. Do you know if you, if you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think it's I think it's noble as well that you know we did score against Hearts. Time Castle scored you know a, what could be a very important equaliser against Aberdeen at the Tawdry. He you know, he turns it on in big games and, you know, not that he doesn't in less big games, but, you know, it's just, he is one of those players who sort of seems to come alive with the occasion. I think the, you know, when he came off the bench for his, his debut, I think, which was against Rangers in the league game in January, I think he came very close to, uh, you know, getting on the score sheet. And he's just, you know, just that kind of player that I think thrives on, you know, the occasion, but doesn't, you know, it's, it's not always, it's not all about him. You know, it's, it's not a case that, you know, this Hibs team is Emi Marcondes and 10 others. You know, he's very much a team player. And I think that's that's a sort of another element of, of why he's been such a big hit. Um, but, you know, it's... I think, you know, people people do sometimes underestimate 
what is important to footballers. You know, they do think that it is all about money or it's all about, you know, playing in certain leagues. But, you know, if you're if you're sort of like being sort of wooed by by you know a club like Hibs, as as you say, then saying to someone, you know, look, there's you know three to four derby matches every season. There's you know games against Celtic and Rangers. There's the chance of you know playing in the cup at um, you know at Hamden, and you know ideally because we know this is what Hibs are targeting with Foley's investment, regular European football. And one of the things that I think quite I find it surprising in the sense of you know where he's been in his career, but Marcondes hasn't actually played in Europe all that often. I think he's maybe had a you know a sort of couple of appearances here and there uh, when he was playing in Denmark, but. You know, obviously, when he's at Brentford, he's at Bournemouth, not getting into Europe. So, you know, it might seem a little bit daft to say that, you know, you turn turn your back on, like, English Premier League wages at Bournemouth to come to, to Hibs to battle for European football. But if everything falls into place with the investment, with the new signings that they bring in in the summer, um, you know, then, yeah, Mark Hondes could play a big part in ensuring that happens on a regular basis. So then you've got a player who is sort of driven by personal ambition, who is helping the team sort of achieve his collective ambition so you know it's kind of like a win-win um situation it's, it works for all parties and you know i think it's as you say players like that don't come along too often um and you know i know i know they say like never fall in love with a lone player but i think there's a lot of Hibs fans who have yeah it's a bit late for that for a lot of people isn't it? <laughs> um not not blaming anybody he's, he's a you know he's a he's a cracking player to watch so i think you, you, you can he is yeah him. Yeah. Um, you know, just really, really good fun to watch um, on and off the ball. And I mean, he's 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 great fun when he's when he's speaking to the press as well. He's just sort of such a such a thoughtful guy. You know, really sort of quite considered, measured in what he says. I mean, we're not gonna we've we've done the cold pasta dish uh, story to death, but yeah. things like that. You know, it's quite clearly he's a guy that thinks outside the box. Um, you know, and just I mean, the other thing that gets me as well is it's it's such a Montgomery signing. Um, Mark Andes, you know, here's someone who has been out injured for a while, wants to come back and enjoy their football, has a maybe has a bit of a point to prove. Um, you know, let's let's go and help them do that. You, know, you look at Mizian's the same, Luke Amos is another one, uh, Nectar Triantis, uh, mm-hmm. I think as well. Just and you know, I think it, it, it probably works really well when you're a manager and you bring in players who it, it's not really a case of like they owe you one, but you know, you bring them in on the understanding that you know Hibs can offer them. You know, certain things provided they give certain things in return and you know i think that's quite a i think that's quite a healthy position to be in and i think you know it does speak volumes to montgomery's man management skills that he's you know able to kind of pitch that to players and convince them to you know to come to him that this is where you know this is where it'd be best for their for their certainly the short term uh future if not long term and you know, I, I just think that that can't really be overlooked because when you think about, I mean, I've lost count of how many January windows Hibs have had where they brought in, you know, quantity rather than quality, or you know, in some cases neither. Um, you know, I can probably count on one hand the number of times they've had a January window, and you've looked back and thought, yeah, not bad. But you know, I think broadly speaking, this January window has, you know, it's been it's been good for Hibs. I'm sure at some point. A bit further down the line in the season, we'll have a look at the January signings and you know, kind of uh, you know, rate their time at Easter Road based on mm-hmm. based on what they've been able to bring to the team. Um, but I think it has been quite kind of stark the difference, uh, you know, in Hibs post January to the way they were, you know, beforehand. And you know, it's it's players in the dressing room, it's players on the pitch, it's just you know the overall mentality. Um, you know, I think it's it's something that it's something that you know when it comes to this top six fight. You know, if Hibs are serious about not just getting the top six, but then pushing for Europe, then they're going to need these players to be you know performing to their best. They're going to need Mizian to keep up his form. You're going to need Marcondes to keep sort of pulling the strings in midfield. You're going to need Triantis to keep putting in um, you know impressive performances in what is possibly a slightly unusual position for him given that he is you know more of a center back than a, than a six but you know he's been a revelation in there and you know same with same with the other signings that have come in Nathan Mariah Welsh who came off once he's he's back fit even Eliza Mayenta you know you've got these players who you know they've all kind of got a point to prove they've all got you know personal ambitions and you know that 
could things just could just align really well for Hibs. Um, you know, it, it could it could be a sort of I will say an interesting end to the season. We don't want to don't want to jinx anything, but you know, I think there's been too many times recently where Hibs haven't really had a lot to play for. Um, you know, going into the sort of final few games of the season, and I think even even last season, um, it did come down at the final day, but we just didn't have enough against Hearts. And you know, it, it was obviously it was a bit of a disappointing end to the season. It, was, it fell a bit flat. Um, you know, especially after they just um, you know swatted Celtic aside four to Easter Road um, not long before that. But <laughs> you know, I think the the team at the moment it's got sort of characters in it who you know are kind of up for a fight, who are up for that sort of you know, late season push. And on top of that, you've got players who've been out injured who are sort of just going to be getting back to kind of full flow at exactly the right time. So, you know, I think it's, there's been some shrewd January business. And I think, you know, now we're getting to the business end of the season. I think we're really going to see, really going to see the merits of, of bringing in players like that and, you know, maybe pushing the boat out a little bit, um, you know, financially to try and get these players in. Um, and, you know, it could be, it could be a really good end of the season perhaps, which, you know, it's not that long ago that we were kind of looking at the way things were going and just saying, you know, are they even going to make top six? So, <laughs> you know, I think it's it's good for a variety of reasons that we can, you know, kind of keep things going, um, you know, right up until ideally the sort of, you know, last couple of rounds. But, you know, that's, you know, we're not taking anything for granted here. There's obviously three big games before the split that we've taken care of um, starting with Saturday. So I think, you know, I think these, these three games are at least, you know, Maybe the second, second and third games, we will see. Uh, you know, if if this Hibs team just does have the does have the sort of stones for that sort of battle. Yep, as you say, that end to the season begins on Saturday at Ibrox. Um, we'll be there uh, to provide all the coverage you need pre, during, and post match. We'll also be at HTC tomorrow just to get updates from Nick Montgomery, as we alluded to earlier. Um, on fitness updates for various players uh, and anything else on the agenda. Um, we've mentioned a few of our kind of recent pieces through this uh, through this video today. Um, so if you've not dis- subscribed, sorry, uh, and you fancy checking out any of those, um, if I could just divert your eyes to the ticker at the bottom of the screen there, um, you can access our current offer, which is £4 for four months. Gets you full access to absolutely everything Hibs Observer related um, and we obviously we do really appreciate it if you would consider taking a wee look at that um, but for now Patrick I think we're going to I think we can leave it there I think we've covered all bases for today um, as I said we'll be there on Saturday and tomorrow to you know bring you straight through to 3pm and afterwards uh, as always thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you again next time cheers